Hi guys, rubber band power time. I've dug one of my old rubber band powered cars out. This one has LPs for wheels, that's long playing records. And I've dug it out because I was having a discussion with Doc Inc about gearing or variable gearing on this sort of uh, construction. At the moment, the only gearing you've got here is the string from the rubber band up at that end attaches to the axle on that little peg so the distance you'll travel is the number of turns you can put round that axle which is the amount of stretch you can get on the rubber bands and then let's say that gives you 10 turns around the axle you then have to multiply the circumference of the back wheel by 10 and that will give you the distance that you'll travel with those 10 turns but the problem you get is if that's a very small diameter on the axle there even though you get lots of turns around it the actual leverage of that string pulling that axle round is relatively small and it will have trouble turning big wheels like this. I'll demonstrate that in a second. So to give the rubber band more uh, power a greater fulcrum turning motion on that axle you need to make it thicker. The thicker that axle is the easier it is for the rubber band to turn it. But the thicker it is the less number of turns you'll get round it. Let's just say you got 10 inches of stretch which you haven't but we'll say 10 inches of stretch and that gives you, let's just say, a hundred turns. I'm making these numbers easy to work out. So let's say you get a hundred turns with that thickness axle. If you double the thickness of that axle, you more than double the circumference. So you get far less than a hundred turns. You'd get something like, just a rough guess in my head, only 30 turns. So instead of turning the wheel a hundred times, you'll only turn it 30 times. So something like a third of the distance under power. I did do some maths on this on one of my old videos to try and explain. Anyway, we'll just do a practical demonstration. I'll put some turns around this and we'll see how easily it accelerates and also how far it goes and then I'll pad out the back axle using some strips of card cut from that bit of cardboard there I'll roll them round and we'll see what difference it makes I'll try and keep this as simple and visual as possible so we've got rubber bands there a bit of cotton or string round to the back axle so I've turned the back axle once twice three times four times so uh, I should have marked that there really but we can see roughly how far we've come with the rubber band I think I've put a fifth turn and we'll be about halfway between the front axle and that cross member so let's put One more turn.
yeah, we're about halfway. So we'll rest that against there. And we'll let it go, and you'll see how slowly it starts. Right, and the band came off about there. Did the full diff distance, but very slowly. And I reckon the um, string dropped off the back axle at about this point. So we actually did, it's just over five meters from that wall to here. So we did nearly six meters. And I've wrapped some cardboard around that back axle. The original axle is about about seven millimeters diameter and the cardboard is about 15 so we've about doubled the diameter now this isn't going to be a perfect example because I can't well, I could have put a peg in there I suppose but I'm going to use the original peg and pull the cotton over an angle I'll wind it and show you what I mean and remember we got a we stretched the rubber band to about here, about halfway between the axle and there. I'm not sure if I can do this with one hand. I need to push it across so it's onto the cardboard and then wind it around so it's winding around the cardboard now so we've lost a little bit there but that's that's about one turn and if we go on to the mid position there we've got about two turns So we'll now see how far we go under power. So faster acceleration and we're out of power here. So surprisingly enough about half the distance under power. maybe three meters which yeah is about half the distance so that's where the cotton dropped off the axle at about this point but we still completed the distance easily it went up there and bounced back and we were traveling faster so this is one of those things you have to work out when you're doing your rubber band car racing what's the optimum fast acceleration and freewheeling or slower acceleration under power for a greater distance. I guess what I'll have to do now is try and set the camera up so we can superimpose one over the other and compare them. Right, I'm not sure how well the camera will pick this up. I'll start the car on that gold um, cross member there which is the join between our tiled hallway and our wood effect kitchen and up where the archway is I've put some white tape across there so we've got a measured distance that we can compare the two runs and I'll superimpose them on top of each other in the editing
In both cases, the car went the full distance with no trouble at all. So what I'll now do is superimpose the two runs using my video editor and we'll see which one went fastest. I strongly suspect the fastest one was that one with the padded axle. And on the video that will be on the right of the two runs. The ordinary axle will be on the left of the doorway and the padded axle will be on the right of the doorway.